Hey, Jason here. Today I want to introduce our new series to you, Uncommon Investing Terms. Uncommon Investing Terms, our new series. In this series, we're going to be talking about, of course, uncommon investing terms, why they're important for you, what they mean, why they're important for the investment analysis, um, how you can gain a huge advantage in some cases, knowing what these mean, how you can avoid potential red flags by knowing what these mean and what these show for companies. You'll learn all that and more in this brand new series. Hey, Jason here. Today, we're going to continue our brand new series on common investing terms. Uncommon investing terms last week or two weeks ago now, as I'm recording this, we opened this series by talking about retained earnings. Today, I'm going to explain the opposite of retained earnings. If you didn't watch that video, you get to retained earnings on Morningstar by going to financials. Clicking on the balance sheet. And scrolling down here. Retained earnings or accumulated deficit, as we're talking about today, is always, always near the bottom of the balance sheet. If you want to learn about retained earnings and both of these in combination together, go back and watch our previous video on this subject on retained earnings specifically. Um, that will be linked below this video. For that, now we're going to concentrate on accumulated deficit. Okay, so these numbers are in billions of dollars, and this is for 2019, okay. So... Oops, not sure why it's doing that. It's not letting me go down for some reason all the way. There we go. Okay, so accumulated deficit is the complete opposite of retained earnings. Retained earnings is generally, you want to see the company have retained earnings. You pretty much never want to see a company have accumulated deficit except for in one situation, um, which I'll talk about in a bit. Accumulated deficit, if, if the company has an accumulated deficit, this number will be negative. For example, this would be negative 42 million or 42 billion. In this case, if it was negative over time, if you build up an accumulated deficit over time, it means you have produced negative net profits over the life of the company. So for example, if this was, let's say, positive 2 million right here, it would be called retained earnings. If they lost by, or if they lost 6 million in the next year, this would be negative 4 million in the next year, and they would have an accumulated deficit. Oops, I'm on the wrong tab. Either way, the numbers still fit. This would be negative 2, or this would be positive 2, this would be negative for the next year, so they would have lost $6 million in net profit in the second year, and in this year they would have an accumulated deficit, while this year they would have retained earnings. If they continued to build up a negative net profitability, let's say $4 million a year, this would go to $10 million, negative $10 million here in accumulated deficit, negative $14 million, negative $18 million. That means the company, if they have an accumulated deficit, have lost money over the entire life on a net profit basis, have lost money over the entire life of the company. This goes back from when the company, I think for when the company IPOs, I'm not sure if it goes back to before when they're a private company, um, but certainly it's from definitely when they IPO. So this is either positive if it's retained earnings, negative it's a, if it's accumulated deficit. If the company has an accumulated deficit over time and it's continuing to get worse over time. It's showing no signs of either stabilizing or improving to profitability. That's a bad thing because it means the company is not making any money on a net profit basis. The only time accumulated deficit that I can think of off the top of my head that accumulated deficit is a good thing is if the company has earned negative profitability or been unprofitable for years and they are showing signs of being profitable and becoming profitable. 
if they do that. That means the company has earned tax credits called net operating loss carry forwards, which we'll talk about in a future uncommon investing terms. That those build up over time and you can use those to offset taxes. That is, and again, we'll go into more detail on accumulated deficit or in terms of, uh, we're going to more detail on um, net operating cost loss carry forward, sorry, in a future video. We'll go into more depth on that. Let me see if I can find a company with negative uh, retained earnings or again, accumulated deficit. Let's see, what's the name of that company? Um, it's the worst company I've ever evaluated. I can't remember. I dealt with Lotharian contracts. I can't remember their ticker. And I generally don't deal in unprofitable companies unless there's some kind of NCAV situation. I'm going to go over to my other screen and search on the blog, on the Value Investing Journey blog, what the name of that, what the ticker of that company was. So I can figure first. So I can see if they are still have an illus or have, so I can illustrate this point for you. What is the ticker? Ticker ticker. I M B U. And if you want to know why this is the worst company I've ever evaluated. Um, at least when I evaluated, I haven't evaluated it in, let's see, almost two years. Then I will link the video below and you can see why that this company was just awful at that point in time. Okay, so here we go. So this goes in reverse order. So this is 2015, 2019 over here. So I can tell just from this number, the company has produced a net profit in recent years because this number has gotten lower. It's gotten closer towards profitability or closer towards uh, positive. That, again, is generally a good thing. You almost always want to see retain the company have retained earnings. I explain more about why that's so important, and it is very important in the retained earnings video, again, linked below this video. Why is knowing if a company has an accumulated deficit important other than the fact that they're not profitable? It's important because it shows you several things. It likely means not only that they're not profitable on a net profit basis, they may not be, they may not have a proper business model. They may be having some longer term issues that are awful, obviously. If this is negative, it means the company over a whole life, they've had issues. So they've had issues for a while. They've had major issues in one or two years that have made this number go negative. They likely also do not have a lot of cash flow, free cash flow or operating profits or a healthy balance sheet. They may have, they may also have more debt then they can sustain this company does not have a lot of debt but they also do not have a lot of cash either all these numbers are in billions i don't know why morningstar does this can't change it there we go It also means this, or it can mean this, that the company is diluting shareholders to a massive level because they are having to continually finance their business operations by issuing shares or issuing debt. In this case, they've been issuing a ton of shares. They went from, so these are in billions, so that's billion, 100, so that's 10 million shares to 2.6 billion shares in four years. That's insane. <laughs> that is absolutely nuts. I've never seen share dilution like that. 
that's yeah i didn't even expect to see that um again i haven't analyzed this company in almost two years it's the worst company i've ever come across but again like i talked about with the retained earnings it gives you clues on where else you can look for potential issues so let's go to the key ratios tab So here's the massive share dilution. That's absolutely, I don't even have the words to describe how bad that is. That's just horrendous. I've never seen something like that. They've never earned in the last 10 years a positive operating profit. They've never earned a net income profit in 10 years. They have negative free cash flow. The only reason this is positive from share dilution, I can tell you right now, <laughs> their um, liabilities make up more than their assets, which means they have negative stockholders' equity, which means they have negative book value in the company, which you pretty much never see that. You very rarely see this negative stockholder equity. So that's <laughs> these are all of the kind of things you can kind of look at as clues just from looking at accumulated deficit. Because again, if a company has a negative retained earnings over time or an accumulated deficit, they probably have some issues, especially if the number's massively negative or not improving. Um, business model, the business they're in, the industry, all these kind of things. And again, it leads to other clues about where to look for some of these other horrendous things. Here's another horrendous thing is the payables period. So this means, and again, we'll talk about the cash conversion cycle. This is the cash conversion cycle. We'll talk about this. This is ultra important. This is another uncommon investing term we'll talk about. What this means specifically is... I'm trying, the reason I'm struggling here is because I'm, I want to badly, I want to explain cash conversion cycle, but I have to save it for another video. So I'll just try to stick to this point because this is absolutely egregious. <laughs> so what this means, this number specifically here, is that it takes the company almost what 13 1258 days so let's see how many years that is that is three and a half years almost payables period in the cash conversion cycle it means it takes them almost three and a half years to pay out a contract for their Ethereum contracts. To pay their bills, it takes them 1,258 days or three and a half years. That is absurd. There's no way, no way this company, it just, it's frustrating me just looking at this company again, so I'm gonna stop <laughs> because I'm getting off track. So Let's get back on track to accumulated deficit because this company is frustrating me just looking at it as you can probably tell by <laughs> my tone of voice and my awkward laughs and me getting off track so getting back on track to accumulated deficit ultra important as is retained earnings because you can tell multiple different things about it or multiple different things about the company with just one number and on top of that it gives you multiple clues on where to look on positive things for if it's retained or anything, 
retain earnings or negative things if it's accumulated deficit. Again, to recap, if you almost always, I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't want the company to have retained earnings versus accumulated deficit, unless you're working at looking at some kind of end cap stock where it's not profitable and it's just massively undervalued based on the assets of the company. But even then, you would still prefer the company to be per profitable and have retained earnings than accumulated deficit. So multiple massive red flags you can tell from this if it's accumulated deficit, potentially good positive things if it's retained earnings. Make sure, and this is why we're doing this un uncommon investing term. Most people, pretty much nobody talks about retained earnings or accumulated deficit. I actually can't think of another time I've seen it is on the blog or on blogs or investing websites or anything. In retained earnings video, I call it the business savings account. Accumulated deficit is the complete opposite. Accumulated deficit is a drag on a company's value. Retained earnings, if it's positive, adds value because it means you have positive operation or uh, profitable operations, likely higher free cash flow, positive free cash flow, operating margins, higher margins in general, stronger balance sheet, all these kind of things. Accumulated deficit means you have the opposite and it's a drag on profitability and the value of the company. How so? A real world example is one of my clients overseas or one of my potential clients overseas they had an accumulated deficit and they wanted to sell the business. So essentially they would have to, and I, I don't remember the exact number, so I'll just throw out a number here is I think, or I know, no, let's just to protect their identity and whatever. Let's just use a completely made up number. So they had $5 million in accumulated deficit over the lifetime of the company. So the way I explained it to them is the $5 million drag on the value of the company. Because in truth, it is because that you had to make up with that money somewhere, again, either by diluting shareholders or issuing debt. In this case, this company was a private company, so they had to take a loan from one of the other owners just to keep the company afloat. That loan, if they were to sell the company, which they wanted to, would have to be repaid. So they'd have to pay, make up. Again, let's say it's $5 million. They'd have to make up that $5 million. So let's say they sold the million, the company for $6 million. They had a $5 million loan out. They'd truly only earn $1 million. I hope that makes sense because it's an extremely important point. If none of this makes sense or if anything in this video doesn't make sense, let me know in the comments below so I can ex try to explain it better. But this is a real world drag on a company's operations and value. Um, and I hope you gained a ton of value from this video and this series and the other retained earnings video. We're going to keep doing these kind of things, talk about things like cash conversion cycle. Like I mentioned, um, net operating loss carry for it's other uncommon investing terms that you can gain a huge advantage over other investors by knowing not only because they can be extremely important, both positively and negatively, but also because they can help you um, understand the company on a deeper level. A deeper level that most investors won't even talk about or know about. Because again, I can't recall a blog post, article, finance article, anything I've ever seen about retained earnings or accumulated deficit. So you can gain a huge advantage over other investors by learning these kind of terms and knowing what they mean, knowing what they can show you, and they can save you an enormous amount of time by showing you or knowing where to look for the other clues as well. So I hope this helps. I um, hope you learned a ton from it. And if you're watching on the blog or are on YouTube, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe, comment, all that kind of good stuff. If you have any questions, make sure to comment. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the notification bell or hit subscribe and to hit the notification bell so you're notified anytime we release a new video and we're releasing new videos all the time. Um, if you're listening to this as a podcast, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe, comment, all that kind of good stuff as well. Um, appreciate you watching. Thanks. Have a great day. Talk soon.